Hey everyone, Mystical Mark here. So this will be your weekly astrology forecast for the week of December 17th to the 23rd of 2023. Uh, this week we obviously have the solstice, so sun entering into Capricorn, and that looks like it's going to be a big day. So let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start off on Sunday here, the 17th. So on this day we're going to have Venus in Quincunx to Chiron. So Venus is here in Scorpio. Again, I've said this, she's pushing to transform. There's an aspect of transformation here that's happening with these Venus-type themes, both Taurus and Libra. So again, this deals with other people, our material things, money, how we make our money. So it could be regarding career, all of that. This Quincunx here to Chiron, Chiron and Aries. Aries is our aspect of self, individual, individuality. Um, it's also, you know, that Mars energy as well, that masculine-type energy. Um, and with Chiron here, this is our wounds to self, right? So Chiron is retrograde here. So it's going over these old spaces. What were these wounds? And in fact, Chiron will be going direct here by the end of uh, December. Um, so kind of pay attention to that. We're kind of at the end of this retrograde, which is interesting that all of this kind of venus -y stuff is kind of happening now and this quincunx is happening now. So there's a frustration here, maybe something that needs to be integrated, right, for this Venus to transform, for these Venus themes to transform. So, and it, it's relating to where we've been hurt, where we've been hurt by other people, where we've been hurt in our career, where we've been hurt regarding money, monetary things, all of that stuff regarding to our sense of individuality, even in, in a way our sense of masculinity too for some people in a sense. And we all have this masculine energy within us regardless of what our gender is. Right? So there could be an aspect of that that is wounded as well in this. So with this quincunx, there is a frustration here. As Venus wants to transform, these types of things will be brought up to the surface, right? All of this stuff brought up to the surface, and that could trigger these wounds. That could trigger a lot of this stuff that is coming up. However, and this can seem very frustrating, but this is ultimately uh, for transformation. Right, so Venus is in the sign of Scorpio. Again, we've had a lot of stuff with, with Venus going on here, right? She's been on the south node already, and we're going to see later later in, on in the, in, the, in the week here, I believe it's on the 23rd, where we're going to have um, Venus in Quincunx to the north node, and I'm going to talk about an aspect of the south node here, but there could be a bit more of this kind of playing out later, kind of throughout the week. I feel like what we've been going through already is still continuing to play through, and there's still an aspect of frustration uh, that is definitely coming through here regarding to where we felt hurt. And again, this is dealing with aspects of uh, the people around us, our relationships, as well as material things, money, career, aspects of self-worth as well, as that is a Taurus-related theme too. All right, so that is Sunday. Let's move on here to Monday the 18th. So on this day, we have uh, Mercury retrograde here in trying to Jupiter retrograde. So what I feel this is, I kind of felt into this a bit earlier before um, getting up here and doing this, is as these planets are both retrograde, and they're both going to come direct around the same time. So there's an aspect of these Venus-related themes, like I said, that are going to be related to this Mercury retrograde. And of course, with Jupiter here, and with this exact trying to Jupiter now, Jupiter is in Taurus. This is the material side of Venus, the self-worth side of Venus, the stubborn side of Venus. Um, so this is dealing with aspects of our abundance, or this could be past abundance, how we've gained that abundance in the past, or how we're going over these old spaces and maybe wanting to shift and change that as well in some way, right? Because Jupiter and Taurus, I always see that as like abundance. Jupiter is this big expansive type energy. Taurus is, you know, material things. It's also like giving birth as well. So this could be the expansion of like giving birth to something that we've wanted to for some time. Like we're going over this old space and, excuse me, sorry, we're wanting to expand um, into giving birth to something too, into some kind of material creation in some way, right? And with Mercury retrograde, like I said, this is relating to these Venus-type themes, so whatever that kind of happened during the shadow period of Mercury retrograde is now coming up again, and I feel like this is really relating to that, and with this trine, there's a some kind of positive, 
excuse me again, sorry, some type of positive maybe breakthrough that occurs because you have to remember Jupiter expands whatever it touches. So Jupiter is expanding this aspect of this Mercury retrograde. So maybe what we have been going through through the shadow period, the themes that have been coming up, it's expanding this in some way. And with Mercury and Capricorn, this could be relating to our goals, putting in the work in some way, maybe, you know, coming up with a plan, right? Um, I had an old boss, he was a Capricorn, and he always used to say, come up with a plan, got to come up with a plan, come up with a plan. Well, that's kind of Capricorn, there's all these rules and plans and structures and things, right? So maybe you have a plan in mind, maybe you had a plan this whole time, and this is we're re-going over this space, trying to figure and work this out to really kind of push through on what we're trying to expand, what we're trying to give birth to, what we're trying to bring abundance to in our lives, right? So yeah, it's the going over this old space again, this, these old themes that have happened through this shadow period, but I feel again that that's related a lot as well to, to Venus and the stuff that all that Venus-related stuff. Just watch my last week's video, watch the previous videos. I mean, we had a Venus retrograde this year. It's been a big theme, right? So I feel like there's some kind of positive, positive breakthrough, positivity happening, positive expansion happening in these spaces of, of where we've been, what we've been working on, and what we're continuing to rework and work on again to, like I said, give birth and expand into these new spaces. All right, so let's move on then to Tuesday here, the 19th. So on Tuesday here, we're going to have the first quarter moon to start off with here. Uh, so I kind of have this set late in the day. I don't know why I have it set so late. Because I want, to, you'll see why I want it to be at that other time later. Okay, so yeah, so we can see now the square to the moon. So the moon will actually be in Pisces when this uh, peaks in this first quarter moon. So sun in Sagittarius, moon in Pisces, we're dealing with very like expansive type energy. Um, very Jupiterian type energy as Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces, although Neptune is the modern ruler. And when this square happens, it's going to be square to Neptune as well. So like I had mentioned last week, this may deal with aspects of deception. Um, don't get lulled into daydreams type of energy. But with the moon here, where it's more of on an emotional, possibly an intuitive level. Um, Pisces can be very sensitive as well. But that sensitivity maybe can help you expand. And what I kind of mean by that is almost like emotional, like intuitive sensitivity in a way. Like listening to your intuition. Because that is what's going to help you to see through like this Neptunian fog right, that exists there, see through that deception, is listening to your intuition, zooming out and seeing the bigger picture, wanting to see that expansion move beyond where you have been deceived, right? I don't know if, you know, if you have, if you're someone that has like Pisces placements, a lot of Pisces placements, or maybe you have Pisces friends, you know, people who are Pisces, you know, sometimes, at least in the ones I know, it's like, they'll just, they just know things or they just kind of tell you things. They're always kind of like in the flow and things maybe just kind of come to them, right? So in that sense, be in that intuitive space, that flow space that allows you to kind of like receive that higher knowledge, that higher vision, that higher guidance. Um, I, always, I almost want to say like higher belief, like the belief in like something higher, right? To kind of help you to see through uh, really what has been happening through this past while. So, and of course, this first quarter moon, it's it's giving this push. Like I said, it's push to expand, it's push to understand, see the larger vision, see the larger picture uh, in that sense. And I also really feel like breaking through, almost like a spiritual breakthrough, or breaking through to your intuition, understanding and learning to trust in that higher knowing and that higher power and that bigger picture in some sense as well. All right, so also on this day, we're going to have Uranus. Where's Uranus here? Uranus in trine to Juno. So again, this is dealing with change. These are both Earth sign energies, uh, Taurus and Virgo, right? So Uranus is in Taurus. 
Uranus and Taurus can be very stubborn though regarding change. So Uranus's shakeups, change, things just happening out of nowhere, advancements in technology, um, you know, living our uniqueness, letting your freak flag fly kind of stuff. Whereas Taurus is very stubborn, very grounded, doesn't really want to change. But this trying to Juno here, this is dealing with aspects of our partnerships, contractual partnerships, marriages, business contracts, those kinds of things. And in Virgo, this is the it's very much in the, that practical sense, day-to-day -day type sense, fixing, reworking, looking at these details. So I think through these finer details in regards to these contracts and stuff, there's changes that are happening here. We're taking a look at these, these practical things, and there's some type of shift in terms of either like pre-existing contracts maybe, or making new contracts in a sense, but there's some type of shakeup and change um and in our partnerships as well who we're partnering with in some way but this is a trine so this is a positive transformation there's some kind of positive change and shift uh that is occurring here and again there could be an aspect of maybe stubbornness or i almost feel like there's an aspect of money involved uh regarding this in some way money self-worth that kind of stuff regarding these types of uh transactions shall we call them and as you can see here, Venus is also um, continuing to move into opposition to Uranus, which we will talk about um, here as well. So anyway, that's it for Tuesday. Let's move. Okay, so Wednesday the 20th, we don't have anything um, peaking there. Let's go to Thursday the 21st. All right, so here on the 21st, this is going to be the big day where we have the sun coming into Capricorn or the December solstice here. So Sun and Capricorn, we're dealing a lot with, again, these Capricornian themes, these aspects of, you know, it could be control, but it's also boundaries. It's also our goals. I can relate to career in this sense as well. Um, I'm going to talk about it coming up here on the next day, but we're going to have this Sun Mercury Kazemi as well. Uh, so that's going to highlight Mercury as well as this Mercury retrograde. Uh, but with the Solstice, yeah, we're going to feel this shift in energy. And again, any kind of shift where we're at like 29 degrees or the zero degrees of any sign um, is a very intense part of that degree. So on the 20th, even though I kind of did say there's nothing really peaking on that day, it still could feel a bit intense as we're at the last degree of Sagittarius. Um, and then, of course, as the sun enters into Capricorn on the solstice, it's going to feel intense again because we're at that zero degree of Capricorn, right? Excuse me. So yeah, it's a thick. It's a very intense part of kind of each sign is kind of the beginning and the end there then that transition phase so again like i said sun and capricorn we're, we're moving from this very expansive sagittarian positive energy to a very grounded kind of earth sign capricorn is all about you know putting in the work our goals all of that kind of stuff so we could kind of feel that intense shift here and also on this day what's interesting is we're going to have venus come into her exact opposition to Uranus. This will kind of happen like earlier in the morning, overnight from Wednesday into Thursday. So again, we're dealing with these shifts and changes and transformation and stuff that has been like in the works. This is regarding some kind of past stuff as well as Uranus is still retrograde here. But this, I feel Venus is in Scorpio wanting to transform. We're wanting to make changes to away from the past, right? We're wanting to transform, we're wanting to change, right? Venus was on the south node here. And again, I'll talk about this when this aspect happens, but Venus is going to be making minor aspects to the nodes. And you can already see it forming here with this quincunx to the north node. So, but with this opposition to Uranus, there's this, this change, this shift that is happening on this day. So this solstice, I mean, yes, it's the December solstice, it's sun moving into Capricorn, but this is one of like many things that are peaking on this day because we also have Mercury in sextile to Saturn, Venus in sextile to Juno, Mars quincunx Uranus, and Mars square Juno. So there's kind of all this other energy as well happening today. Uh, the moon is going to shift signs later in the evening as well. So I think this Thursday, it, it's going to be an interesting day. And I also feel with anything opposed Uranus, it's going to be interesting. So expect some kind of shakeup and change, right? Venus in Scorpio, Scorpio already gives an intense energy and it's pushing for this transformation. It's pushing for this 
facing whatever needs to be faced regarding these Venus themes to release, to, to change, to transform into something new. And I think Uranus here in Taurus is going to help. Right? And this Scorpio energy in opposition to this is that intensity that really needs to push this Taurus energy to change, to shift, to transform, because Taurus is very stubborn. So there may be some, there may be some kind of shakeup that really happens on this day regarding people and things in some kind of way. And, and they use that to kind of just summarize these Venus themes as people and things, our relationships, our material things, and then how that all kind of relates together. Right, so expect some intensity in that regard and really start to expect things to start to shift as well this week. Uh, let's look at the next thing here. So Mercury and sextile to Saturn. We have Mercury here in Capricorn. Saturn rules Capricorn and Saturn is in Pisces. So again, Saturn can deal with blocks, restriction, um, aspects of control, structure. Uh, so I, I do consider that Saturn in Pisces is kind of like the dissolver of that structure, dissolver of kind of that control. Um, so with this sextile here, it's kind of like, almost like a, I almost feel like we're kind of, again, dealing with these transformational aspects of this Venus opposed Uranus in some way. And again, that can deal with our money things, and that can very well relate to career and our goals as well. So there's a dissolution of blocks in some way. So regarding that shadow period of Mercury retrograde with all that Venus stuff that has happened, again, on the south node and then moving into Scorpio, I feel like that is now again kind of coming up here with this mercury retrograde again we're kind of maybe moving through some of these blocks that are coming up and just like i said there could be an aspect of boundaries here as well i know i spoke a lot on that in previous videos um regarding aspects to you know mercury and capricorn mercury and capricorn is very cold capricorn is very cold it's very like perfectionist like you want somebody's opinion on whether something is actually good or not feel free to ask a Capricorn. And if you ask for their honest opinion and be like, I want your honest opinion, get prepared for that honest opinion because you might not like it, right? So just be careful with that. Capricorn, remember, is the devil card in tarot. Just gonna leave it at that. So yeah, but I feel like this is, this is, can be assisting us in some way. I feel like this Mercury retrograde going over these old spaces, we're maybe seeing where these blocks were maybe being able to lay some boundaries down and to help this uh, Venus energy transform a bit more as well. So we're also going to have Venus uh, come into exact sextile to Juno on this day as well. So now we're really dealing with these partnerships, again, contractual partnerships, business partnerships, contracts, all of that stuff. And there's an opportunity here really for that stuff to transform in a positive way on this day, really pushing through these transformation transformational stages, I guess, transformation that's happening within these themes here throughout this retrograde time. Uh, also, we're going to have Mars here in Quincunx to Uranus. So there is a frustration here, possibly, in wanting to take action in these positive directions and expand. Again, Uranus and Taurus is very stubborn. Maybe it doesn't want to change, but I feel like this Venus and Scorpio is the intensity that we need to want this desire to shift, to really push and shake this up to happen. So it's almost like there may be a frustration here, but this may be a positive frustration, right? In terms of maybe we wanting to take action to shift, but it's frustrating in what we have to shift and change. There could be an aspect of instability here. It could be like, well, why do I have to change this? Why do I have to change that? You know, sometimes you're so stuck and then you're just like, oh, screw this. I'm just going to go do this anyway. And it turns out to be the best thing that you've ever done. It's like you don't want to do it, or you think you don't want to do it, you go and do it, and oh my god, it was the best thing ever. This could involve some kind of aspect of integration as well regarding certain shifts that maybe need to happen in order for us to really push forward. Because remember, Mars is in Sagittarius, and Mars is ruling the North Node. It's also Chiron is here in Aries as well, so that adds a flavor of this. We want to expand into more positive spaces. We want to see the bigger picture. We want to move away from these this wounded type energy and move towards you know our own independence 
move towards its new direction of self, in a sense, right? But there's this frustration here regarding change, and it could, could be stubborn energy, like I said, some aspect of money that exists here. But there's, I feel like this Venus in Scorpio, she's not going to put up with that stubborn behavior. Even though Venus does actually rule Taurus, I feel like Scorpio is just going to be like, no, 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 girl, this needs to happen. You need to take care of this shit. Right? It's, it's gonna, gonna make it happen in some way. So, yeah. And you have to remember, Uranus to Uranus rules Aquarius. And Aquarius and Scorpio, they're both kind of edgy type energies. So that's not really necessarily light and fluffy. They can be a bit more edgy. You know, you tend to see people with these kinds of placements. Maybe they have a lot of tattoos or piercings or hair dyeing or... You know, there's there's something about them that's either unique or you're magnetically drawn to it in some way that gives it that sense of edge, that spice that exists, right? And that's really kind of pushing this. This is making Venus, you know, she's got to be a bit more spicy here when when she's in Scorpio and really pushing for this transformation and facing things that maybe she would normally face. Um, and facing this opposition to Uranus, there is... There is that push uh, for change in some way. Uh, we also have Mars in square to Juno as well. So there's this drive, this desire of moving, expanding and moving into these positive spaces. But there's also this, these details that need to be looked at within these contracts, within these partnerships, business contracts in a very practical sense. There may be some nitpicky stuff that needs to be looked at on this day. So overall, I feel like the energy of this day is just going to be kind of crazy, especially with this opposition to Uranus. There's quincunxes to Uranus. That's a very Uranian energy, a Scorpio energy. It's going to be interesting. And with this Capricorn energy, it's going to be shakeups, interesting. There could be a coldness, boundaries. That it's, It m might be kind of all over the place. But in a sense, I almost feel like there's a positivity to it as well. Right, so we'll kind of have to see what happens when we get through it. Uranus can be very unpredictable, so just be mindful of that on Thursday. All right, let's move here to Friday now, the 22nd. So on this day is when we're going to have this Sun, Mercury, Kazemi moment. They're going to be conjunct here at zero degrees of Capricorn. So remember, I mentioned this can be a very intense degree. So I think... With this trine still here to Jupiter, I feel like this is intensifying this Mercury retrograde stuff. These themes, again, like I said, related to giving birth on um, these new things or things that we've wanted to for a while. Move away from like these old spaces regarding our abundance, regarding self-worth, regarding material things, regarding... It's just, I feel like Taurus, it's, it's like that fertile ground, right? It's just giving birth to these new things, expanding into these new spaces that could potentially even bring us that abundance as well, right? So, and this Kazemi moment is really highlighting this. It's highlighting this strongly within our minds, within our communication. There could be heightened communication in what we want to say here. There could be heightened um, taking a second look at things as Mercury is retrograde here. So taking a second look at things that have happened uh, during this shadow period. Um, communicating during that, maybe laying down some kind of boundaries or whatever kind of really needs to happen in this sense regarding, like I said, those, those Venus-related things, right? Venus is still playing, I feel, a very prominent role here uh, throughout this energy. And then, of course, later on that day, uh, Mercury will retrograde back into Sagittarius. So we're going to have that Kazemi moment, and then all of a sudden, Mercury is now in the sign of Sagittarius, where Jupiter in fact rules. So there, there is this aspect of now expansion, but it's also maybe what we thought of before, we're going over this old space again and be like, okay, now we're seeing this, maybe we can really do it this time. You really start to, you know, put the plan in place. The sun is now in Capricorn, put the plan in place, make up that plant, try to build up that foundation. But again, Mercury is still retrograde, so we're kind of maybe reworking, relooking at some things, but things are coming into place for change. Right, there's shifts and changes that are really kind of happening here. And Mercury is going to be in a more positive space, although it is still retrograde, so still expect all the typical Mercury retrograde type stuff, um, despite the fact that it may be a bit more 
uh, jovial here in Sagittarius, and definitely relating to a lot of more expansive and this giving birth type energy. All right, so then let's go now to Saturday the 23rd. So on Saturday here is when we're going to have this exact quincunx to Venus and the North Node in Aries. So I know it's not showing on this chart. Um, but with this quincunx to the North Node, Venus is also making another minor aspect to the South Node over here at the end of Libra, and that would be a semi-sextile. So with a semi-sextile, it can kind of go in one of two ways in terms of interpretation. So it can be a good thing, as in these signs kind of working together, or it could be a negative thing, as these signs normally don't necessarily work together. So it can kind of be good or bad. Uh, but with this quincunx here to the North Node, it's like Venus is really pushing to transform, transform, transform in some kind of a way. Um, the North Node, though, in Aries, it's that Mars energy. It just wants to charge forward. It wants to march forward. But Venus is here is making that semi-sextile to the, to the South Node here. So this could feel negative, but I feel like this is an opportunity for this to be positive as well. As that South Node in Libra wants us to release that stuff from the past. That stuff may be coming up here to be transformed in this Scorpio energy, to be released, right? This is like that Mars wants to rush and move forward. It's that drive, that energy to move forward. But over here, it's like there's too much junk in the trunk, right? You can't, you can't just put the pedal to the metal because there, there's not enough, there's not enough torque to pull, to pull all that junk that's in that trunk, right? So there's an aspect of maybe release that needs to be worked on here regarding our Libran themes, so maybe our relationships. There's an aspect of balance that we haven't seen where we've been, you know, put upon in the past. And I know I've said this before about Libras, but Libras, people take advantage of you. And that makes me sad because Libras are very nice people. They want to find the peace. They want to find that balance. And they tend to sacrifice themselves in a lot of ways to make the other happy so that the relationship can be happy, right? But that's not really what this is about and what we're trying to do to move forward here, which is what could be frustrating regarding this semi-sextile, this quincunx, all of that. But what we're needing to do is transform that with this Venus here in Scorpio. And this could be relating to all these Venus-type themes, including material things, money, how that relates to career, all of that in terms of what needs to be released, what needs to be transformed from that past so that we can integrate it here with this quincunx energy and really actually do move forward in that positive abundant space and for our own self and our own independence and ultimately to find balance between um, these kind of north and south nodes. So this uh, masculine and feminine energy as well. All right, so I think that's pretty much all I have for this week. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. So if you liked it, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, well, you also know what to do. And feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe if you want uh, more from me. Hit the bell for notifications. I tend to get these up usually around on the weekend sometimes. If I'm late, I'll, I'll post on um, the community tab on YouTube or something if something happens or on my socials. All those links are in the description below. So thanks. Have a great week, guys. Take care.